Here. Wolverton. Here. Jones. Here. Nelms. Pardon. Here. Got four. Thank you, Mr. Segrist. Um, at this time, I'll entertain a motion to dispense of the reading and approve of the minutes from the Public Safety Committee meeting on April 29th. Motion. Second. By Councilor Wolverton, by Count and seconded by Councilor Jones. Aye. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Four to zero. Under old business, we have one item, 1704-24, request for consideration of no parking areas on portions of St. Charles Street and Stewart Street. Um, this item was carried over on the previous committee meeting. Um, Gear, Councilor Gear and I were not able to be there for that one. So um, I see quite a few people here to talk about this. Um, so what we'll do is if y'all, first, first I'd like to hear a report on your ideas for a solution. And second, if you'd like to hop up and speak, feel free to stand up. Just give us your name and your address and Mr. Seegers will sign you in so we have a record of who is here. And um, we'll go, go from there. So, Councilor Gear. Well, you and I were both at the meeting um, that uh, we <coughs> had with uh, Kale and Police Chief uh, Bruns, Bruns, Brundage. Brundage. Brundage and the mayor. And, you know, we've had many months coming close to a year where St. Charles has been extremely impacted with the, ch with the change in the mix of businesses in, um, in, the, Edge in the Edgewood Strip and just the, the traffic and the traffic and the parking especially in the first block or the first two blocks of of st charles uh has been uh, hard to describe really if you haven't lived there but um the police have been called i would say a couple of dozen times for blocked roads um, cars have been hit at least three times that i know of people's yards have been driven through um, you know, there's just a public safety thing going on in those first couple of blocks. And uh, we've tried to think of solutions, uh, talked to the mayor a lot uh, about the fact that, you know, our streets are public streets, but, you know, um, my, my neighbors certainly have, have been there, many of them uh, tend to to more and more years and you know consider the streets in front of their homes as as their neighborhood street so we have just a we we have a new situation down the street uh with with the many many several new restaurants that require a lot of parking uh kale and i have talked the the strip does not have any parking requirements the zoning at edgewood uh, carries no no parking requirements with those businesses so we just have new restaurants that, uh, you know, all at the same time bring in t really too many cars. And we know we have a parking issue, but we really have a public safety issue on our street. Um, the, mayor's, the mayor might want to talk too, because, you know, his big concern and the public safety concern, the main concern from the mayor's perspective and from many of our residents' perspective is that um, in case of emergency, if that street was, uh, was blocked, which it gets blocked often, and, and really with just regular parking, that street is, is blocked. Um, emergency vehicles would not be able to get through. So the day we all met, um, we talked about a lot of ideas, as you know. We talked about some parking solutions that require much more research. We talked about um, a few ideas that the neighbors have come up with about uh, ways to work the street, uh, things we might do to solve some of the um, traffic issues and parking issues, but really for the, 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 the main issue of allowing police vehicles and public safety vehicles to get through, I think the mayor and police chief, police chief Brundage felt like a yellow curb to keep at least one lane open would be a good solution and you know on face value that does sound like a good option but our street is so narrow and it's full of driveways and mailboxes and uh, people trying to park their personal vehicles on the road a little bit that you know the neighbors see many hardships uh, if we stripe a yellow curb along that street and so that's where we are I've talked to the mayor about some other ideas. Kale and I continue to talk about ideas, and I know the neighbors are 
you know, they're somewhat frustrated, but, you know, these things do take a lot of coordination and discussion, and sometimes you think you have a solution, but it will cause another problem. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of where we stand, and the neighbors, though, are here to talk about what they believe are the hardships with the yellow curb. I think most of them, I, I'm not really certain. But. Well, and I failed to mention at the beginning of this item that I've received a petition with, I want to say, 30 plus signatures on it um, and their addresses that we can use for the record. I've received a variety of emails, and I'm sure you have too, um, almost to 100% all are opposed to the yellow curb, just as a, as a note. I, have no, I don't think I've received one that was in favor. Um, just so the record is set. So, are there any questions or comments from the committee or others that are in yeah. in the room? Yes, sir, Councilor Jones. Yeah, yeah I mean, can we, I'd like a an official. What, what is the recommendation from the city? Uh, is there a recommendation from the city how that we to address this, or is there no solution for it? No, so the, and I'll, didn't mean for you to get demoted, Chief. <laughs> um, Chief, Chief Ross um, and Lieutenant Brundage. Um, but Lieutenant Brundage was the, was the one that was in our meeting with um, with Andy and Melanie, myself, and Kale. Um, the, again, the, the biggest part that we were looking for was to address that, that immediate public safety concern about being able to get emergency vehicles down the street. We know there are a lot of ideas from a engineering standpoint, from a public safety standpoint, um, from a neighbor's want or need standpoint for us to be able to talk through to figure out what's going to be best long term to be able to get traffic flow and everything else figured out. But in the meantime, as far as public safety goes, from the conversation that we had with Lieutenant Brundage, being able to open up one side of the street would be something that would, would handle that particular piece of it right away. Um, Again, we'd, we'd have to look at exactly which side of the street and how far down and how far up and what on either the, either of the side streets that come off of St. Charles there. So there's there still has to be some discussion on exactly where, where that would go to be able to make traffic flow um, better through the neighborhoods um, and then and hopefully keep them out of the neighborhood so that there's no parking down there. But that was the immediate um, recommendation from Lieutenant Brundage when we sat in that. If that, if that, if that answers. Curbs on one side, on one side. That, which we've done on, on, on some other on some other streets for similar reasons, similar problems. You know, the fundamental problem is we've got a street in neighborhoods that were designed in the 20s and 30s and to accommodate, you know, Model T's, Model A's, and now everybody drives a big SUV, and there's just simply not enough room to to accommodate, you know, the vehicles that that need to park at, at these residences or at these businesses, and the combination thereof, which we've got, you know, right there at, at St. Charles um, and Oxmoor, so and Stewart too. I mean, some of those other streets. Um, you know, we brought in some great business, which is great for the city, but it, you know. This is the cost of it, I guess. It, we've got to put these cars somewhere. Uh, and I've tasked um, uh, Lieutenant Commander Eric Hampton with this problem before, and then the Lieutenant Commander Brundage. And they've come up with what, what they feel like are some viable solutions. We continue, and we will, and we will continue to uh, enforce the ordinances that are in place down there um, with regard to parking. Uh, some of the streets that, that are mentioned in the ordinance where you can only park, you can't park 30 feet uh, from an inter intersection. We've been enforcing that ordinance and then some other ones with regard to parking. But, um, you know, those, those are temporary measures, really, a Band-Aid for the problem. Um, um, but that's the most viable solution that, that, that me or my staff has been able to come up with thus far. And, of course, we've worked with Kale too. And, um, Randy Hambley, so, um, but that's where we are at this particular moment. Is there any signage out about leaving room for public, you know, vehicles to be able to get through? No, there's, I don't think there's any signage to that effect. Um, yep. Obviously, that's the intent for the, for the things that are in place. Yeah. There's, um, there, there, if I could just say a couple of things. So, after our meeting where Lieutenant Brundage and, and the mayor, and we all agreed that, that yes, a yellow curb would potentially help with this one issue. 
but if, if you'll show the sign, Brian, and so there is there is on the corner of Saint of the first block in right behind, right behind the the um, businesses. There's this that says local traffic only, but that is not a sign that's enforceable in any way. And um, then if you'll show the other picture where the car <coughs> is, the cars are meeting. Um, so so the top so this this is this is and I talked to Lieutenant Brundage after our meeting and unfortunately what we understand will happen if we yell a curb this um, this side of the street in the next block then our road is so narrow that everybody will be parking on the other side of the road and we'll have cars meeting head-on on the right side of the road so this is the and, and Lieutenant Brundage even said yes this is this this will be what happens is we'll have to have a lot of jockeying on the street because one of one side will be a one side will be a yellow curb and so everybody will be parking on the other side the businesses yeah. will even though the, tra the traffic so, sick thing is there that says local traffic only can, can somebody please tell me I, I, I'm a visual person as you know I, can someone give me a schematic of where the yellow, the yellow curve, curve is going to go. We're right. just talking in yeah, concept so here. I'll tell I, you. Is it on this side? The, the, so right the side, yes. I don't think it's been determined. Oh, okay. Yeah, so so it, it was. It, it, it was determined. Was, it was. He said so the, uh, what, that, that's the part. The right Before side Before we road. have anybody right speak, I, I, I don't understand what we're right. recommending or, or we're so not basically recommending. Gotcha. Yeah. As I something. understand yeah. the yeah. item, it would be that you would yellow stripe one side of St. Charles. But no, not that side. The, the, it was determined that day I'm not, that, yeah. oh, I'm, that, that the other side would be striped, the, 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 the side right there, side the, the west there. side. But, but, in, but you know, I, I don't, if, but, but what that will do is encourage people to drive on in and park on the right side. But, but you know, if we well, want them yeah. to do that. What it, what it would, as I understand it, and I'm, I'm not trying to advocate for or against it, I'm just saying what I understand it to be, is that one side of the street would have, would be yellow, so that it would remain clear, <laughs> and everyone would park on the other side of the street, street, and that would leave one lane open. I think what Melanie is saying is, once you do that, you have one lane for a two-way street. Basically. And so at certain, it, times, of the day. At certain times of the day, that's, that's going to cause problems as well. So that may not be the best solution. The original purpose behind it, as I understood mm -hmm. it when, when Melly asked for this to go on, was exactly what the mayor said, which was you would theoretically be leave, leaving a lane open for emergency vehicles. So it would be, this would really be tailored to sort of one issue, which is emergency vehicles getting into the neighborhood if that is a, if we were having problems with that. We might have to, and I think Melanie has already pointed out that we're continuing to talk about other things and work through to see if there are other solutions that we might be able to find. But this was, the issue de dealing with the issue of emergency vehicles because that was one emergency vehicles and two was a potentially quicker solution if if it will work so that's why this is being considered there are other things that take time to come up with because we've got to deal with we got to figure out how to how to do it that are not before us right now so this is a, a fairly limited narrow issue at this point does that help? Yeah, yeah, that helps a lot. I mean, I, you don't need to park on either side. That's kind of what I, but there's, there's, there's not enough yeah. room. Yeah. So I, think I just I, thought it was a given. No, no, no. Nobody's and parking. You could, you could do that too, but then no one can park on either side. I and mean, that, that's right. the so Which we need to do because that's the only, only way you but can I even get the people live in that neighborhood all park on that street. For their Probably house, not right? on this yes. block, no, 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 it's further no. down. They did. Yeah. This is supposed. The idea was that this would go into the neighborhood into the residential portion of the neighborhood. So but, but that continue is, through that but block. That's not but that deep. is correct, Walter. We have determined that, that that right side of the road right by the um, the strip should be should be uh, limited to um, some deliveries only, no parking. Where you saw those for that first group of yeah. cars, we I think we've determined that. Um, but that will have to be put on the safety agenda uh, for a different time. 
could, that's could, yes could we do just simple first of all 30 feet from an intersection i mean we could paint that paid. that's the ordinance oh, that's 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 right. Right. is that yeah. any it's not from an intersection though it's from a stop from sign. stop sign has yeah. that had any it, impact at all well um the the sometimes they abide by it and sometimes they don't but that the the problem really happens just right in the middle of the street i would say more than at the ends i feel like i wish there was uh, you know i mean obviously i have we have thin roads you know yeah. devon is yeah. you know 18 feet wide yeah. I, I wish a i'm just gonna say this i wish that people would have an awareness when they park their car that there's a car right now i don't understand why they do that is there any signage i don't think local traffic only I don't think anyone thinks that. They think, oh, I'm from home when I'm local. Yeah. You know, right. so yeah, is there, you know, ordinance number this? Do not, you know. We we actually more uh, well well it's got to be enforceable yours. and that you particular. You can't block a public safety vehicle. You have to have a wide. You can't block a road. That's an ordinance. Well, which car? Which, which, which car are you? Uh, which car is blocking the emergency I'm vehicle? I'm if saying, you got them on both sides. If of the you have signage saying, you know, or I'm saying a more direct sign, local traffic only is sort of an indirect, vague sign. If you have a very, you know, this is enforceable by tickets or ordinance number, or whatever. Don't block the road to have public safety vehicles. I, I understand. I, I, what I'm asking is, how are you going to enforce that before the public safety vehicle shows up? Who's blocking the street if there are cars on both sides of the street? Which car? Yes. Which car parked? I mean, you're, I, I get your point. You're asking people to do yeah. it with a sign. Yes, that, that's and, my point. And I'm, and I'm not. I'm trying to stop. I'm not saying that's a bad thing. I'm just saying, right. just so we're clear, there's no real way to enforce that. Yeah. So, it, you're, you're ba basically all you're doing is asking. That my my point is, does someone have an awareness when they park the car? Oh, hey, there's a car right there. Maybe I don't need to park right here. I mean, we have it in our neighborhood too. I know. I agree with you. I see that all over the yes. city, and I so, and I don't disagree with you that it seems logical that people would do that. So one thing that Kale might be working on, and and this is just an idea. This is not, you know, we're just going to begin the conversation of maybe actually drawing off some legal parking spaces on a piece of paper. And seeing how many you could actually get in this area on the streets, on the neighborhood streets, for either the neighbors or customers, or patrons to use. And I don't think there would be very many legal spots that wouldn't block a driveway or a mailbox or be is that and and or be too I'm, close to a truck. I, 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 I have, I'm not working on that. Okay, you're never going to work on that. No, no, no. I'm just <laughs> not, yeah, I, I don't just want not all yet. The folks over there no. Trying yeah, to get them to but. Be asking. That's right, but but we were just we began we began that discussion because quite honestly, you know, once you take into consideration a driveway across the street or a park another parked car across the street, there wouldn't be that many legal parking places that so that cars could still get through and so that emergency vehicles could potentially get through. So that's just one thing we're thinking about, and there is a restricted residential parking ordinance that we're also talking about, but these are things that we have to work through a lot of details about. And but that's all we've come up with so far. Could we go to the tenants and ask them to valet and maybe they get a deal with, with the Dawson Church? I mean, I don't know. I'm not saying everybody would do it. Not everybody wants to valet because they don't want to spend the money. Just to be clear, Today we're, Today we're dealing with are we going to yellow stripe this? Right. The other, yeah. all the other all stuff the other is going to take time. That's a, it, and it's very complicated. So the issue today is, You're right. are we are we going to be dealing with a yellow line? I, sounds from like what I, it sounds like the neighborhood is pretty so much in consensus yeah. on this. But I, if someone is not, then I'm. <clears throat> certainly would be happy well, for them to speak but if everyone is if the neighborhood's in agreement that this is not what they want well, i think that's a good segue into it seems like many of you would like to speak uh so if you would like to speak feel free there's a microphone right there if you feel like you can project project well enough without it feel free to say where you are Thanks. i'm uh, mark day i call it at 208 st charles street um, i agree with a lot of what's been said i do think the yellow curve is going to be a problem i would like to point out that what's been on the screen, and it seems like what most people are talking about when they're thinking about this is that area there. But really, if we could just turn around 180 mm -hmm. degrees and see the neighborhood, mm -hmm. that's where I live on the left up there. And I think this is where you're gonna have the problem. I, I, I can't speak for anybody else, but putting a yellow curve down by the parking lot doesn't seem like a bad idea, but putting a, a yellow curve down this road, when you hit those overflow times um, with the restaurants and people are trying to park up and down the street, they're gonna, it's gonna force, the residents and the restaurant customers to line up on one side 
you can have a one-way, basically, cars are coming from, which happens which happens now at the peak times. Actually, it's been pretty quiet for the last two weeks, and I don't know what to attribute that to, but um, when, uh, but when, 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 when we're having a problem, when it's a peak time, cars are gonna come head to head and, and they're, they're gonna get stuck, and then that's when you're gonna get cars hit and pe cars trying to reverse. You know, one of them's gonna have to reverse or pull into a driveway, it's just, a, it's a big mess. I think if you paint one side yellow, you're still gonna have that problem. The road at that time is still gonna be blocked for an emergency vehicle. It's gonna, you know, it, it, it would really limit where the residents can park, like myself, I've always parked on the street for 10 years in front of my house. And most of the time it's open, except, you know, when there's a peak time, it's taken. But to, you know, to prevent, if it, if it ends up being my side of the street that's painted yellow, I can't park in my house anymore. You know, my guests can't park there. There's not a lot of parking in the neighborhood. It's gonna be yellow all the time. Whether it's whether there's traffic there or not, the trap the problem is the restaurant the customers. And what I would like to see is some effort be made to stop the restaurant customers from parking all the way up St. Charles Street before we jump to painting one um, side of the street yellow, which is going to impact me as somebody who likes to park on the street, and also create other problems and really probably not even solve much of anything. Walk. I just need to get your last name. A Hackle, B A H A K E L. Thank you, Mr. Bayhackle. Anything else? Hey, I'm Brad Hightower. I live at uh, 306 St. Charles Street. Uh, so I'm interested in this issue both uh, because I live there and I've experienced the parking issue, but also uh, because my son was hit by a car at the intersection of St. Charles and Oxmoor, uh, right down here in March. Uh, he's physically doing pretty well. He's got some anxiety that has resulted from it. Uh, at, at a crosswalk? Yeah, so he was there was a driver a crosswalk. coming this direction down St. Charles, and my son was coming across the crosswalk with our after-school sitter. He's a college student. Uh, they had the walk. She, the driver, had a green light. She didn't see him, and she hit him. So he walked across with the no was, walk sign? Yeah, yeah. So it was, it's, uh, he was coming home from school, so we have a sitter who comes and picks the kids up after school. Okay. It's at, at Mr. Attar has reached out to the city, and we've got traffic engineering engaged on some yeah. solutions. Um, they'll probably start going into effect in the next two weeks or so. Okay. So I'm happy to come back and park. talk to anybody. I've already talked to several of you about it. Uh, and I'm happy to come back and talk to the whole room anytime y'all like. Um, so to me, the, the issue with our street and the parking, it all fits together with this, it's part of it. You know, since the, there's just not nearly enough parking, unfortunately, for all the restaurants. And, and since, since that change has occurred, um, you've got so much more traffic than there used to be. And I think a lot of the people that are coming there are not familiar with the neighborhood of the street. Uh, they're irritated that they don't have a place to park. And so, They'll park wherever they can. You know, they'll park side by side so there's no room to drive down the street. Um, they'll park all the way up and down the street. They'll park right here. Uh, you know, they'll pull up on the curb. Um, and so what you end up with is you know, a dangerous situation in my opinion. Now, when my child got hit, um, it was at around 3.15 or so in the afternoon. So it's not necessarily directly related to when you have the most customers coming in to the restaurants. But you know, you've got delivery trucks that are parking here during school time. I mean, literally up on the curb or blocking this lane. You've got vehicle traffic coming this direction on the Oxmoor. Now with this red light, when it stops, when it turns, they're sitting right on top of the crosswalk. So the kids are unable to go across the crosswalk. Or if they do, they've got to navigate around the cars. Same thing, again, with the delivery trucks that are here. The drivers that are coming this direction, they can't see the traffic coming down St. Charles because of the delivery trucks. The drivers coming this direction can't see what's going on with the crosswalk because of the delivery trucks. So you've got just this whole confluence of issues that have occurred since in the last, say, six months. And I've lived on the street for about a 10 years now, and, and this is new. We, we didn't have a traffic problem until recently. 
And so all of this has changed, and, and we would appreciate very much your help in trying to find a solution. I, I don't think simply painting a yellow line down one side of the street is going to get there. Um, I don't think that that's the solution. It doesn't sound like it is from listening tonight that anyone really believes that will get it done. Uh, it, you know, it's unfortunate that it's it's the way it is, but I, I think it's something that has to be dealt with at this point, and I'd appreciate your help. Uh, I'm a lawyer. I'm not an engineer. Uh, there are people here, I'm sure, that can find a solution to this. Uh, so I want to come tonight and just express that, say thank you, that uh, I'm going to ask for your help, and, and I'd appreciate it. Mr. Hightower, I'm going to have a question. When it's high time, Saturday night, Friday night, whatever it is, are both sides of your street full of cars from these customers? Not every night, but sometimes. I'm on the third block, so I'm, I'm, I'm fortunate that I'm further back. So the, the further back you get, the, the less it happens. But, you know, so if you're, yeah, if you're traveling down this direction, I'm past the intersection here on the third block where that truck's parked under the picture, right up here. And so it's not as bad for me, but it, it has been on occasion. And it's mostly, yeah, like you say, high times, you know, when, when, when everyone's out, a lot of college students come to the strip. Um, and what you'll get is you'll get cars all the way down, you know, both sides to the point where you just can't hardly squeeze a car in between. And so not only is it problematic from a, trying to drive your car up and down the road, but if you've got kids, and there's a lot of them, two of them are mine, coming, you know, that they want to go down there, they want to cross the street, it's dangerous for them because they can't see the cars that are coming. Cars can't see them. Uh, so I think something's got to be done. Yeah, and in the non-peak times, I think what one of the emails alluded to today was that people, the, the neighbors when they're parking on the street, stagger their cars pretty well. And there's a benefit to that, which is they feel like it slows traffic down. And they're worried. They're, the concern of that email was that if we have a yellow curve on one or both sides, it may speed traffic up. So I forget the receipt. They run it. They send it. With all the construction. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. I mean, I, mean, I can kind of, I, I feel like at this point, we, we should drop this uh, and then have a, a, a bigger discussion around, you know, solutions for, for parking throughout the whole area. I mean, yellow curve, that, that's not going to solve this. So uh, I would move to drop uh, this item. Okay, so a motion on the table to drop this item. Is there a second? Second. Second by Councilor Harden. Is there any discussion? And yeah, there might be other discussion, and that's fine. I, I just felt we were bigger. My name is Wayne White. Harris. I live at 716 Hellmore Lane in West Homewood. I've got some rental property in Edgewood, thank God. And I appreciate all the neighbors coming over and participating in whatever's going on. I understand exactly what these people are talking about because it is an issue. Maybe some of the solution, and I think some of us are going to address, and this is not a yellow line on the side of that. I think the biggest issue is uh, the personnel that works in the store, employee department. Nobody wants to park, and I know the mayor has worked on trying to get people to park behind golf uh, But unless we enforce it, we being you guys, because I get out there like a dummy every every Friday and Saturday and try to play the police cop, and it doesn't work very good. I mean, they won't do it that night, but come back about 30 minutes later, guess what, they'll be parking. I don't want to deny any customer from parking. It's for everybody, even the spots I have inside. But if you don't maintain something for your own people, you won't have any I think we need to work somehow on either patrolling the area for whites and I'll make it up I used to work at Parisian back about 110 years ago in Vestavia. We used to invest in Vestavia, we had a place and we parked across Canyon Road. And uh, they had a guy that monitored the parking lot. Employees could not park on this side of the street where Vestavia, where the uh, Parisian, the Sears lot is. And uh, we just need to maintain it. Now, I remember back some time ago, 
they even spoken, some people may not want to do this, about Stewart Street, where it comes down from a residential section in St. Charles, possibly blocking that off and incorporating it under parking here a lot, just make one universal parking area there. That might help some, okay? That might be the quick, quickest fix you can do to eliminate some of the parking. Get the employees to park. I, I sit there and watch it. I'm a dummy. I sit out there all the time and watch it. And they'll park. I see them from slides. They'll park over that parking lot of customers that get parked there. They'll walk to the right. See Taco Mapa, they do the same thing. See Sam's, they do the same thing. See Wayne, he parks where he can watch it. So anyhow, with that being said, at all boils down, we need to maintain our personnel in this country. And we need to make you set it up to where a policeman, maybe we set up some uh, some signs where we have maybe one hour parking for the customers. And uh, maybe have some type of guard that can watch the places where people park. I'm talking about the employees at night time. I'm sure they get a little skittish to walk to the car. I remember when I worked at uh, Pazich downtown. I'm not talking about at a restaurant where you get a parking store. I used to park in St. Charles and walk to work. So that was a little bit of a distance, but we didn't have any parking at all. All I'm saying is I think you fix the problem. Not that they're a problem. No, but they're taking up spots that could be utilized for customers. And I think that will alleviate a lot of the space and security that we have. If you don't want to do that other part, you know, I know a parking deck has been entertained. And I know maybe uh, Dawson, maybe you guys might want to, I know you talked with them about that, and I did have some of my tenants, I know Ryan over there, Ryan Helton, he used to park over there in the parking deck, and he does still now, he parks at the church behind the lot, mm -hmm. like the letter that the mayor put out, and I passed it out to most of my tenants, once again, unless the city wants to enforce it, people aren't going to get excited about it. And uh, that just might be something I think we could address pretty quick. I think there's a uh, space about people have reservations about parking deck. You could even put one between, what's that name, Ruby Slipper or whatever it is, and the frame shop. You could even come up with a double, maybe three decker there and park employees and people. But really, I think something simple, if you can put something together to enforce the parking. You can, you can park out on uh, St. Charles at 8 o'clock in the morning and watch it fill up with employees. Yeah. You'll have 8% of the lot full on both sides. Well, that kind of alleviates the issue for the customer to come home. Yeah, that's... That's all i got to say. That's a good I'll idea. I'll be glad to paint a yellow line if you want me to. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Harris. We, we appreciate that. Uh, so we have a motion and a second. Oh. Amy. Uh, as parking, Chris Lane, Mayor Third Drive, um, is talking about that parking lot where between uh, Oxmoor and Stewart. That is, uh, would need immediate attention because when you come out of the parking lot and you wait on that light's always red for a long time, cars are trying to take a ride in there. You can't go anywhere because that lane's blocked for the parking. So if they would eliminate between Oxmoor and Stewart immediately, make that no parking on either side right there that open up it, it gives you a lot more flow especially at the red light especially with kids walking out between the cars they're going without it, it's a safety issue there also um so as a part of mr hightower's email to the city his suggestion or one of the recommendations there that came back to mr hamley is to study or does say study he wants to come up with either the option for that being a loading zone only in certain times and parking will be prohibited because it's a loading zone. Right. But he hasn't finished submitting his proposal back to us yet. But that is very likely going to come from him. So. Okay, anybody else? Yeah, just Brian Middleton, uh, 210 St. Charles Street. Just one other item that I meant, like, that hadn't been mentioned. We've got a Presbyterian church that sits right down Osmore. Really, people are looking to park close to the restaurants that they're visiting. If we could extend the sidewalk all the way down Osmore, where you could get on a sidewalk, because I know I've tried to push strollers with young kids. It's dangerous. You can't go down Oxmoor. You have to try to cross the road. 
we could extend that, talk to the Presbyterian Church just like we have with Dawson. I think we open up more lots. And again, I think the big thing is communication. Jennifer, I think you asked a great question. The problem has not happened the last few weeks. You asked what's changed. College is out. Again, me and my wife, we work with a lot of college students. You ask about common sense. Again, <laughs> students are trying to learn. But as neighbors, we can't sit out in front of our house and tell students, hey, you block both sides. They don't, again, they're still learning. They're learning. But again, more signage that we can put up to help educate and really clearly spell it out for them can be helpful. Again, I think uh, as people have mentioned, it's employees parking, customer lots, and it's just being able to access other public lots that exist in the city. We can do simple things like that. I think our problem goes away. But again, really appreciate, like Brad and others that have spoken, I appreciate the council's help and uh, just the time for the matter. Okay, thank you, Mr. Middleton. Uh, is Chief Broadhead still here? Just yeah, I, I um, Chief Bresden used to have these little bright orange, like little sheets of paper that I used to keep in my glove box that that say, Chief Ross, I don't know if you'd seen this before, but they were little and it was just like, it was an educational piece. And I'm wondering if we had a number of that, we could just distribute to the neighbors while we're working through this, that they could stick on people's, you know, windshield wipers i mean it's just a it's just a well i'm just saying she's saying if you're if, uh, he's saying if he's sitting there watching people park or whatever i'm saying for cars that are while we're working through this issue if there are cars that are like i think you're saying it through I, i'm just saying he didn't want to do that okay I, i'm just saying I mean, he didn't want to he didn't want to watch <laughs> <laughs> the police <laughs> car yeah. no, yeah. 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 fair enough all right so i retract <laughs> We've got a motion. Wait, all right, committee, listen up. We've got a motion and a second. All those in favor of dropping this item, signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. The ayes have it. Four to zero. We will work on other solutions, uh, and the yellow curbing is off the table. So with that, Mr. Segrist, public safety is adjourned.